Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at erosion, transportation and deposition. This is part of Paper 1, Unit C, River Landscapes. The processes of fluvial erosion, transportation and deposition play a huge role in shaping river valleys. Let's start off by thinking about erosion. This is a wearing away of rock and there are four specific processes that you need to know. We have hydraulic action, which is a sheer force of fast flowing water hitting the river banks and beds and forcing water into cracks. This compresses the air in the cracks and weakens the rock. It causes vertical erosion in the upper course and lateral erosion in the middle course, especially when fast flowing water hits the outside of a meander bend leading to meander migration. We also have abrasion. This is where small boulders and stones being transported by the river may scratch and scrape the river banks and beds. Stones which have recently fallen into the river have angular, sharp, jagged edges and are particularly good for abrasion. Ongoing abrasion is responsible for both vertical and lateral erosion. We then have attrition. This is where stones being carried along the river will collide with each other and the river banks and bed. As they do this, their jagged edges will be knocked off or smoothed down. Some small stones may smash into several smaller ones, which will be further eroded into, into smooth pebbles. And finally, we have solution. This is where carbon dioxide in the atmosphere dissolves in the river to form a weak acid. As the water flows through the channel, it will react with the rocks in the riverbanks and bed. This chemical reaction will cause rocks in the riverbank and bed to dissolve, particularly chalk and limestone. Remember that these are the same as the coastal erosion processes, so they should be easy to remember. But it is also important to understand that river valleys experience both vertical and lateral erosion. Vertical erosion is downwards erosion that makes the river bed deeper. It is usually caused by hydraulic action and occurs in the upper course of the river, causing steep sided V shaped valleys. Lateral erosion, on the other hand, is sideways erosion, wearing the river bank away to make the channel much wider. It occurs in the middle and lower courses of the river and leads to wide, flat valleys. Let's move on to fluvial transportation. Fluvial transportation is a process by which a river carries its load. Loads differ in size from large angular boulders in the upper course to fine suspended silt in the lower course. Load comes mainly from material that has weathered and has tumbled down the hillside, although some come from eroded riverbanks. There are four specific processes of transportation that you need to know. Our first one is traction. Near the source of the mouth, the bed load is quite large and heavy as it hasn't been eroded that much at this point. So large boulders and rocks are rolled along the riverbed as they are too heavy to move in any other way. We find this type of transportation in the upper course of the river. Our second one is saltation. In the upper course, we also find saltation. This is where small pebbles and stones are bounced along the riverbed, like on the diagram above. They are bounced along as they get lifted and dropped with the rise and fall of the water's velocity. As we move further down the river into the middle and lower course, the material being transported is much smaller as it has been eroded much more. Our third process of transportation is suspension. This is fine light material, also known as silt, that is carried along with the river's flow. This is a suspended load. This is what often makes the river look really dirty when it actually isn't. Particles carried in suspension will settle at the bottom if kept in a jar of water and the water will then look clean. And finally, we have solution. This is where minerals are dissolved in the water and tiny invisible particles are transported by the river. But it's not to be confused with the erosional process of solution. Let's finish off by thinking about deposition. This is a river dropping its transported load. The bigger the particles being transported, the greater velocity that is needed to keep the load moving. So once the river starts to lose energy, the largest boulders are the first to be dropped onto the riverbed. 
This is why you see large boulders in the riverbed in the upper course of the river, close to the source, but you will see fine silt in the lower course, closer to the mouth of the river. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on erosion, transportation and deposition along rivers. Thank you for watching.